And also it's an S-Bend. So we've talked before about the S-Bend with investors, haven't we? And I just want to remind you of that again. I'm stiff, I'm so sorry. Is everybody hot, cold? How are you feeling? Okay, I'll stop fussing then, shall I? <laughs> okay. So the investor S-Bend goes like this. Yeah, you're really cool. You're really amazing. Oh my God, you can make money. This is stunning. Oh my goodness, you can make that kitchen look like this. Wow. You're kind of boring because you've now made 10 kitchens look like that in the last three months and I've kind of seen everyone and it's exactly the same kitchen. Yeah, you know what? Other people are a little bit more shiny than you and, and you know, they're offering a bit more. Oh, actually, they haven't paid me back and you're very consistent and this is why I work with you because you consistently produce good work and deliver results. It's the investor S bend. It's also a mentoring S bend. All of you will probably go through that with me at some point. Man, what you, no, I didn't mean this egotistically. What you do is amazing. Oh, you've told me that before. Yeah, because it works. Oh man, you've really told me that before. Yeah, because it works. No, 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 you seriously, like I've heard this mate, all right? Oh, right, that does work. Okay, right, and yes, I now actually see, okay, it's steady delivery. And that will happen in our mentoring relationship as well. It's normal and I'm okay with it. And I'm okay if your starry eyes stop and because I don't want you to be starry eyed anyway. I want you to be brilliant property developers. But the investor S spend definitely happens. Just be comfortable about it. But your S spend also happens. There is a point here that both of you decide to jump out. You either jump out of the relationship here before you actually contract with each other or you jump out the relationship here where now nah, you're really boring. I've seen investors, even my, one of my larger investors, he didn't jump out the relationship with me, he just jumped into another relationship with another property developer. Very unfortunately, there is half a million pounds still owing. Well, because he offered more money. And I was super boring because I just do all these vanilla boxes and I offer the same amount of money. But you know what? He's always had his money. You know, and so he jumped out there for a while. This other guy was a lot sexier. He drove hotter cars than me. He had a better house than me. You know, it just was sexy. And it was. Only it didn't quite deliver. And so the combination of the other project not delivering and my consistency means this guy has tucked right back in and gone, yes, Suze, we're in it for the long run. Good. I'm very glad. So that will happen with your investors as well. Just be aware of it. There is a point where you say, wow, as an investor, you're brilliant, you're brilliant, you're brilliant, you're brilliant. Oh my goodness, you're a nightmare. And you jump out of the relationship too. Um, so going back to the beginning, do you remember our investor screening that Ash and I did? And we did that like 18 months ago. And that's because we'd already had enough knowledge to know the kind of person that we were interested in working with. And you note on our investor screening, and I'm just going to repeat that we didn't indicate at all how much money they had. How much money they had was incidental. They had to have something, obviously, otherwise they can't be called an investor. Um, so that's, that's a qualifier. Do they pay on time? Are they polite to our team? Meaning, that is not so much, you know, do they say please and thank you to Tiff and Holly and, and, and Fern and everybody. What I mean is, when the chips are down and it gets stressful, somebody who's courteous to someone that they perceive as not as deep influential to them is probably going to remain polite under pressure and remaining polite under pressure is a really great way to remain a good partner because we remain polite under pressure <coughs> I may have a button in my office that our bookkeeper gave me that's called the bullshit button <laughs> but that's where I vent <laughs> um, but we always always would remain polite under pressure um, extreme pressure like when we bought a block of four flats and the investor got the mortgage on the wrong property um, ah, and we found that out the day before. Oh, Nick, you seem to have instructed the wrong mortgage. What can we do about that? You can imagine what my internal button would like to have said to him, because he was screwing up a project for all four people, but you know, polite under pressure. Are they efficient? Do their things fast and effectively? Do they add to us? Not like, do we want to take from them, but are they positive? You know, do they add to our reputation? Do they volunteer? I mean, we try to define, do they add? You know, but is it, a, is it a two plus two equals five kind of scenario? You know, so do we add to them as well? Um, have they got the basic understanding how property works? Or, and do they understand that it's variable? And you know, these things can go up and down. Are they a nice character? You know, do we want to hang out with them? Have they done a deal? And then finally, are they compliant with 13.3? And we're going to cover 13.3 tomorrow. 
That for us was our screening process.